In this video, we're gonna learn how to take a whole bunch of potatoes, one of my favorite crops of all time, and plant them directly in the ground. Kevin Spiritu here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. These really are one of my favorite crops of all time. I have six different varieties here. I'm gonna show you all of them, but what we're going to do is plant them directly in the ground. I haven't done that except for one other time back in 2019 in my survival channels where I grew maybe 100-ish pounds of potatoes or so and tried to live off of those as well as some other fishing, foraging, that type of thing. Got a whole video on that. It's actually quite interesting. I lost a lot of weight and I lost a lot of muscle and I'm probably still dealing with the after effects of that, so it's not recommended. But what we're doing, we're gonna take six different varieties, put them in the ground over here right next to the Epic Shed. So without further ado, cultivate that like button and I will multiply your potatoes by a factor of 10 and let's get into the video. First potato on our list is the Chieftain potato. You can see we already have some eyes sprouting. I'm not going to cut any of these, mostly because I don't wanna wait, but if you want to, you could slice in half, let it scab over and you'd get some extra growth. Next up, we've got Terra Rose. This one is a beautiful looking smaller potato. Honestly, very excited about this one. Extremely excited about the French fingerlings right here, a prized culinary potato. Again, it is chitting out. Chitting is the verb that refers to the sprouting of the eyes there. Interesting phrase. I don't tend to use it that much. Next, we've got Russet Burbank, the classic potato that we probably all see at the sacks at the grocery stores. Here we've got a really small one. This is Russian banana. Now, as the name would imply, you can see it's kind of a petite sort of banana-esque shaped looking potato that I'm very excited about. Never grown those before. And then finally here, we've got the red Pontiac, which is a classic and you really just can't go wrong. I find for me, reds are some of the most productive and that's why I have a decent amount of them. So here is the area that I wanna plant it in. It's gonna be directly in the ground. You can see I've done a little bit of testing of this ground already. And I've had incredible success growing potatoes directly in our native soil here in San Diego, California. It is a little heavier in clay and I'm going to use a modified Ruth Stout method. For those of you who don't know, Ruth Stout was a gardener way back when who basically just dropped potatoes on the ground and covered them in hay. Now I'm not gonna do exactly that, that's why I said modified. So the first thing I wanna do, remember I have six varieties and I have six potatoes in each variety. So I have a total of 36, I'm not cutting them up at all. So what I wanna do is measure out roughly a six by six area. We're gonna plant one every foot or so. We're gonna go quite dense. So let's go ahead and get that started. I wanna start at the shadow line of the shed. I don't want too much shadow being cast. Morning shade, totally fine. But right now, right around this line is gonna be perfect. And we're gonna edge it up just to the beginning of the shed here. We've got our four corners. I've roughly cleared out the area. Now, like I said, I've had success growing in this type of soil before with potatoes. They're sort of a pioneer crop. You can throw them in relatively crappy soil and they will do okay. However, I can't really bury them in this, so I am gonna loosen it up just a little bit. I'm gonna throw six foot long rows down. I won't loosen up the entire thing or till up the entire thing. Now, what Ruth Stout would have done is she would have just dropped and covered with hay or straw. I'm gonna be using straw. I'm gonna modify that a little bit. I'm gonna go about four to five inches down on my potato. I found personally that burying it just a little bit deeper tends to have more success and you don't have to worry about hilling it, which is something that Ruth Stout also didn't do. So I am going to not hill these potatoes, which is classic advice that I find is just honestly too much effort for too little reward. So we have the basic structure of our trenches dug out. I wanna smooth out some of the inconsistencies in the depth and brush away some of the soil before we get to planting. All right, our trenches are dug. They're relatively even. They're about three or four inches deep. We can mound slightly if we want to. We don't have to. I've, again, found that planting about four inches deep and just not doing anything besides mulching will produce a nice amount of potatoes. So I have all my varieties here. Make sure you label them before you put them in the ground, but let's go ahead and get them in. Okay, we're gonna go in with our red Pontiacs first. Eyes up, and then we'll just place it right down in here about a foot, foot and a half spacing, I would say is the absolute minimum. So we're gonna just test fit these here. Eyes up for the obvious reasons that you don't want your plant to stall out, simply because the eyes have to reroute themselves through a better path in the soil. So just don't do that. We'll clear some of this out right here. Our last one will go in right there, and then we'll cover these up, and I'm gonna leave these right here for labeling later. Next 
next up on this row is the critical element and that would be the mulch. Again, I'm using a shredded straw mulch called garden straw here, but you can use all sorts of stuff. With potatoes, it's really just about keeping the soil moist, not really having to worry about them too much. You want them to be a set it and forget it type of crop. You don't want to have to heavily manage them because again, they are designed to be an easy crop. They're just a simple one to grow. So about three or four inches of mulch down on top of this row, and then we'll rinse and repeat with the rest of our six different varieties. I've given the beds a little bit of a tidy up. I think they look pretty nice. Maybe I'll put a border around here or something like that. But as I water these in, just some final thoughts on the planting phase of the process of potatoes. Again, you don't necessarily have to wait for the eyes to sprout. That's a common misconception. Potatoes will come back if you just forget them in the ground after harvesting. So it follows that they don't necessarily need to have the eyes sprouted out to reproduce. So I put a couple, these two right here, they weren't shitted out yet. It's totally fine. They'll just probably be a little bit slower on the take. And again, I'm planting these semi out of season. The benefit of living in San Diego is that I can plant things slightly out of season and then by the time it's ready to harvest, all you guys can probably start planting it, which means that the video comes out when it's actually useful to you, which is really nice. And I have to say, I'm feeling like I'm finally living my fantasy here at the Epic Homestead of basically playing Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley in real life. Shout out to anyone in the comments if you play those games or if you have a kid that plays those games. Just what a wholesome way to spend time if you're gonna spend it on the computer. Fantastic way to spend time. You actually learn a lot of real world skills. And I've got my potato crop here. So you wanna water it in. They don't need a ton of water when they're just starting to sprout because again, they need to form roots first, then the shoot will come up. And after that, then you can start regularly watering. But again, if you live in an area with a decent amount of rain, you probably don't need to do a lot of watering in general. In fact, even here in San Diego, last spring, I planted much in a similar fashion, although it was at a friend's property, and I just let the natural rainfall irrigate them, and I got 25 pounds off of about five pounds worth of seed potatoes. And so, to me, that's a five to one ratio. I'm really pleased with that. And for no extra work, remember no hilling and no watering, it's free food. I mean, it really is free food. I spent about an hour here today and I'm going to get free food in just about 80 to 110 days, depending on the variety here. All right, our potatoes are in the ground. We've got to give it some time. So the next time I see you, we'll have some early sprouts and we'll talk about the care during the growing phase where they're putting out all those stolons and forming those new potatoes. So it's been about 30 or 45 days since we planted our seed potatoes. And I wanted to talk about just a couple things that you might notice when you are starting out your potatoes in this early stage of growth. Basically the stage where the seed potato is starting to sprout, it's gonna come out of the soil, and it's gonna be growing up to actually what looks like a really beautiful potato patch. So I'm expecting at least 100 pounds of potatoes out of this little patch here. Now what you'll notice over there in the foreground is those potatoes are looking a little bit stunted. Now why is that? Well, remember, your potatoes are going to sprout. They're gonna chit, and you typically plant them after they chit, or after the eyes start to sprout, just a little bit of growth. Now these four varieties right here, they were already chitting when I put them in the ground. Those two over there were not, but I wanted to plant them at the same time just to give you a sense of, you can break some of these rules with potatoes or these conventional gardening rules, and it's not gonna ruin your crop, it's just gonna slow it down. So those ones took about three weeks longer to get out of the ground, that's why they're stunted. They're not stunted, they're just slower, they're behind in time, so they'll catch up pretty soon. Now, a couple things that we've done here to make sure that this is one of our better crops of potatoes in ground. You'll notice that there's quite a bit of straw over the top now. I used to just have straw right down the row where I was planting the potato. Now we've gone ahead and let it go over these hills here because we were noticing some roots starting to creep out into the center. So we'd much rather cover that up. And now again, I'm following a modified Ruth Stout method where I'm not hilling these potatoes up like crazy. You can see these potatoes right here. There's well over a foot of growth here. I would say about 18 inches of growth, and I haven't hilled up that stem. I'm going for the lazy potato approach where, yes, maybe I get a little bit more yield by hilling it up and using a lot of extra soil and a lot of extra work, quite frankly, but I don't really wanna do that. These were an easy crop for me to plant. I'm just gonna let them sit here and I'm gonna wait. Now what I will do is I will add more straw as a mulch to make sure that any potatoes that start to form 
don't start getting hit by the sun. We don't want to solarize these potatoes and really turn them into what we call a green potato, which is an unhealthy potato to eat due to the high solanine content. And so at this point in time, it's just keeping them well watered, making sure that I add bits of straw here and there to cover up anything that I see that's worth protecting. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna be back in a little bit to take a look at when you know it's time to harvest. Been a few more weeks and there have been some updates, although it looks like not much has happened in the potato patch. Number one, the Russian bananas, this small, low growing one, it's come back. I mean, it was hit by some frost. It died back somewhat severely and has now come back. So sometimes just waiting it out and not freaking out can be the solution. However, right next to it, these French fingerlings have a problem that I need to take care of right away. So here are the French fingerlings. And as you can see, we have this sort of black mottled spotting on the leaves. It's not a pest. There's no real holes in the leaves or anything like that. And it's not a watering issue because then the rest of the plants would also be in trouble. So to me, this looks like a potato blight. Now I could spray the French fingerlings with some sort of organic fungicide. However, I want to really just eliminate the chance that it gets to any other part of this potato bed. Seems like those are more susceptible. Maybe these ones can stave it off. Who knows? I'd rather not take the gamble. And French fingerlings, they've been in the ground for about 75 days or so. So they will be new potatoes. Fingerling potatoes are pretty prized, especially when they're young. I'm gonna cut my losses on this particular row and we're gonna grab the potato fork, which I have never used to actually harvest potatoes. I've used it for a lot of other stuff and harvest out this row to protect the overall crop. So let's remove our little label here, pop it out of the ground. And with a potato fork, what you want to do is you don't want to harvest directly next to the potato because it's obviously clustering potatoes everywhere. And so you want to come in front of it and pull through it like that. So let's do this very carefully. Remember, there's other potatoes we don't want to damage here. So we want to get down in and come in, give it a little kick maybe, and just pull up. We'll see what we get. Oh yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful. Oh, ho, ho. these are nice potatoes. These are nice. I'm going to get hyped just so you know, I'm always going to get hyped on these potatoes. Holy moly. These are nice. One plant, four good ones, five good ones. Woo. Yes. Tripped. I mean, just look at that perfection. Look at the size, look at the color, look at the structure. These are gonna be absolutely delicious. Let's keep going. Here's a closer up. Oh, just found another one. Holy crap, this is amazing. Okay, so again, here's the base of the potato plant, right about there, right? So you don't wanna go in there because we just saw how many potatoes we pulled out. So you wanna go in front, give it a little kick into the soil for some leverage. You don't wanna stab these beauties and then let's give it a nice pull see what we get on this one looks like they were below what I thought we got one. Oh yeah there we go two three fitting I'm doing this on Easter because this is like a treasure hunt four Here's what we ended up with. Honestly, I am extremely stoked about this. I planted five seed potatoes in that row, about this size or so, and I don't know the weight yet, but these look beautiful. Number one, blemish free. I mean, they look absolutely delicious, gonna be really tender and nice. And the rest of the whole crop is now saved. So we've got our French fingerlings. They're gonna go inside. Check out the Epic Homesteading channel if you wanna see what I do with these potatoes. But the rest of these, they still got some time to go. I want them to size up and get a huge yield. So I'll see you back here in a couple weeks. So we're back after maybe a week or so from when we harvested these French fingerlings that had a little bit of blight on them. And I have to say it was the right call and they've been absolutely delicious. Later on, I will show you one of my favorite potato preparations after we harvest this out, which is exactly what we're doing. So how do you know when it's time to harvest your potatoes? The most obvious indicator is just the days to maturity of that particular potato variety. So you might see 85 days, you might see 110, 115, 120 days or so. And if it's been that much time, provided everything else has gone well, the potatoes should be ready to go. But there are a couple of visual indicators that I want you to look for. 
So one of the key things you want to look for is some leaf yellowing and leaf dieback, which we're seeing here. This could be a blight thing, but it really doesn't look like the blight that we just saw earlier in the video. So this, to me, it's been long enough. I feel like this is a good sign. You're going to start seeing them die back. You might see them brown a little bit. They'll droop a little bit. And what's happening is all the energy is really being sent down to those tubers for those delicious potatoes that we want to harvest. So that's a really good sign. Sometimes you may even see potato berries form depending on the variety. Potatoes will form a berry. You don't want to eat that berry, but it'll form up here. You'll see some flowers and stuff. That's a good sign you have new potatoes. When the berries form and fall off and stuff, that's a good sign that your potatoes are pretty much ready to go. So let's harvest these. What I want to do, the sun's getting low. I need a little bit of extra help. And I want to introduce all of you guys to someone who's been helping out a lot around here at the Epic Homestead, my garden manager, Jacques. Hey, I'm Jacques. So Jacques here, Jacques's been helping out quite a bit. That's why so much is getting done around here because there's so much to do in the epic gardening world. We have your trusty favorite tool that you've been using for just about everything here, Jacques, the potato fork. Been waiting for the moment to actually get potatoes with that thing. He's been using it for everything <laughs> but potatoes here at the homestead. And so now we're actually gonna use it with potatoes. So when you harvest potatoes, there's a lot of ways you could do it. So what you could do, let's take these Russian bananas, for example, is you could just grab it at the base and pull it up and then you could go digging and hunting and that's completely fine. But if you wanna get a little fun and a little spicy, you could also come in with a potato fork, come in front like we did before and pull up. So. It's really dealer's choice. You could do it whichever way you want. I'll give this to you, Jacques. Maybe you start over there. Yep. I'm going to start over here. Great. Ooh. There's, look at this, dude. Oh, wow. There's tons of little ones here. Nice. Interesting. Ooh. That's a nice little, That's a nice little, little, too. little tatey. So Jacques has found something in the Chieftain potatoes. What have you found? Look at that. Look at that. Perfect potato. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. That's just on the first one. That's just easy too. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go POV. POV <laughs> harvest right here. Woo. There you go. There's another one. We're gonna one. have to dig around in there probably. Couple of little guys. Couple of little guys. Oh. If we don't see there another we big one, I'm gonna be sad. Oh, that's a perfect There potato. we go, baby. <laughs> Honestly, it's like Easter every single day. It's like Easter. It just keeps giving. It just keeps on giving, baby. All right, I'm gonna go over here and check mine out. All right, so I'm coming over and I'm in on the red Pontiacs. And look at this. This is crazy. They're just bunched up right here. So I'm gonna do the pole method here. We'll give it a quick pull, see what we get. Oh yeah, oh yeah. One, two, three, we don't stop, four. And never forget about these little guys here. These I call them taties, they're the small boys. There's a couple ones in here. Okay, that's a pretty good yield on that, but there's probably more, yep, one. Oh my, dude, look at this one. Oh wow. That's beast, that's okay. A big that's a big boy. <laughs> so this trenching method, Remember, you guys saw what we put in the beginning. Probably put in this and we're getting this. Is it the biggest yield per potato you could get? It's definitely not, but also zero work. So that's really the trade-off that you need to do. Okay, the final row, Terra Rose. Very pleased about this one. These are the ones that I put in before they were chitting, which is the sprout. And so they were slow to start, but they look like they're pretty healthy. That could mean that they're actually just a little bit behind, a little bit younger, so they're not yellowing and stuff. So that could mean that the harvest would be smaller. Maybe it means the harvest is perfectly fine. So there's only one way to find out, and that's to get in there and pull them up. I'm pretty optimistic about this. Terra Rose has an interesting color. It's sort of like this, uh, I don't know, like a crystalline type of red on the interior. It looks almost like a gem. So let's pull it up and see what we've got. Nothing on that, because they're all on the ground. It's much darker. Look at the darkness on this, oh, wow. much darker. All right, let's dig in here. So welcome to the potato bounty. I will say, I'm gonna estimate probably about 40-ish pounds of potatoes perhaps from a six to eight pounds planted. Remember the French fingerlings should be here and I've even eaten some of those. So that's probably another 10 pounds. Really solid yield. There were some issues for sure, like the rusted Burbanks underperformed. I think it could have trenched those a little bit deeper. The Russian bananas got a little frost. You could see the ones in the back were a little better, the ones that didn't get hit by the frost. The ones in the front were a little smaller. That's fine, I just have delicate, delicacy potatoes now. So what I wanna do is actually show you one of my favorite preparations for potatoes called the smashed potato indoors. Welcome to the inside of my house. I almost never show you guys this, but here we are in Kev's kitchen and we're gonna learn how to make my favorite potato recipe, the one that I make probably the most, second only to a diner style hash brown, which I mastered during the Apocalypse Grow Challenge in 2019 where I was living off the whole garden. Potatoes were a staple crop. I've got some French fingerlings. I'm gonna show you how to make smashed potatoes. Not mashed, but smashed. 
So I've got a few potatoes here. These are our French fingerling babies. We gotta boil this water first though because we need to soften up the potato in order to smash it. So let's turn this on. We're gonna mix in just a little bit of salt. We're gonna boil this and I'll be back in just a second. All right, we are boiling. Let's put our three fingerlings in. Probably take about 25 minutes to soften them up. So I'll see you back in another 25. While we're waiting for those taties to soften up, let's go ahead and just top off our rosemary and we'll use some of this for a topping. So take a look. I've done a video on rosemary before, but we can just prune right here. There's two side shoots coming out. So this will bush up really nicely and top the plant off. And we have a nice sprig that we can use indoors. All right, we are ready to go with some nice softened up potatoes. I tell you, this little mesh thing that goes over the sink is a lifesaver. We're gonna let these guys hang out and sort of steam dry a little bit for maybe three or four minutes. So this is where you gotta be on your game. This is the smashed part of the smashed potato. So I'm taking the lid of the same pan that I used and you wanna smash it down. The thinner you go, the crispier it will be and you want it to be uniform and not break apart too much. So let's see if I can do that in this video here. Ooh, that felt good. That felt good. Okay, that feels like a good smash. That's perfect actually. Okay, that's perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, let's do this one. Oh, that is so satisfying. Satisfaction level 9,000, over 9,000 actually. Okay, we're coming in with some butter that I will put a little bit of that rosemary we chopped up into. Let's do a quick drizzle of the butter. These aren't healthy. I'll tell you that right now because I'm throwing a bunch of oil on them. We're doing olive oil next. We want the crisp factor to be at maximum, absolute maximum. Gonna hit it with some pepper. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a sprinkle of some salt. And I think we're good to go. I've preheated to 390 Fahrenheit. We're gonna go in for about 45 to 55 minutes and we are not gonna flip these. See you soon. All right, the moment of truth, my friends. Let's see if the crispiness is at the levels we desire. I mean, that looks pretty damn good to me. And here we go, almost three months of growing, actually a little bit longer, but not a lot of work to grow these potatoes. And here they are sitting in front of me. Let's just take a quick little crunch here. Oh, that is gonna be crunchy. The thinner you go. That is, that is so good. It's really hard to describe. It's 20% flavor boost if you grow it yourself. If you cook it with, with tons of fat and oil, 20% flavor boost, and it's just so good. And it's so easy to grow, guys. Potatoes will never not be grown in my garden. I'm always gonna grow them. I hope this guide was helpful. If you wanna see more messing around and fun cooking videos, homestead, stuff like that, go on over to Epic Homesteading. I do like to do these full grow guides from time to time to go seed all the way to harvest, all the way to kitchen, but it's not gonna be super frequent here on the Epic Gardening channel. Go over to Epic Homesteading for a little bit more of the inside the house stuff, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna enjoy the potatoes. I will see you guys next time. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing. Woo!